everybody, this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the next step in the build series for the Tron 5.5. Um, this one's going to be a little bit of a shorter segment because it's going to involve just a completed servo installation, uh, the remainder of the other electronics needed, and more or less what I wanted to spend time with you going over is the wiring layout or the wire mapping or the wire schematics or whatever words you guys decide to use. I just kind of wanted to, to share my ideas and how I decided to do things. That way, um, if you guys want to try to copy it, you can. Take in mind, if you're using other electronical components, you know, opposite of the ones I'm using, different brands, servos or motors, ESC, etc., you might have to tweak a couple of things, but this is just a basic principle of, of how easy this machine was to wire. I was able to do this in 15 minutes, I think, 15, 20 minutes tops. So, let's take a look. Okay, let's start. Um, you know, again, guys, and in the previous segment, too, I didn't have the front two servos installed. Really easy to do. Just look in your manual. I mean, they're just held together. Or it's a standard servo install, right? You just got your four little bolts. Make sure you square up the servo the best you can. Fasten it down. Add your Loctite. You're good to go from there. Um, but let's talk about the ESC first. So let's look at that. Again, Hobby Wing 120 amp platinum. Um, I know we've went over this, but you know, with the ESD, uh, ESC installation, so you guys do know that the motor wires come right under. Again, nice and clean. Um, flip right around here. Uh, let's see where we at. Um, and then yes, yes, we came down here, did our zip ties, everything was good. So um, I left you guys off last time. I had all the bunched up wires and stuff up here. So what I did is I ordered some of the I don't know what the exact word is for this, but it's the, the spiraling. It's like a plastic spiral you can put over wires. They, you can order it in different diameters and in all kinds of shapes and sizes and colors. I like to just go with black. It keeps it kind of stealth. But you can see that I, I was able to, to wrap and braid it all the way up. Okay, they do have a spot for a zip tie right here. So the Hobby Wing has the um, BEC and throttle cable that goes. It also has the dedicated line for gyro sensing, or not gyro, um, governor sensing if you're using an external device. And then it has the just positive and negative lead for double redundancy when you plug in back here. So it's a pretty thick cable. So you can see that I got it wrapped really well. Okay, I did one zip tie there. Now this is going to be an outrunner motor. So of course the base doesn't spin. But what I did was I alleviated some of the tension so I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I alleviated some of the tension on there so that there's a bit of a loop uh, or a bow, if you will, just to kind of keep it away from any unwanted heat sources. And so that turned out really well. Now, I was able to, I actually did the, the ESC cabling before installing this servo. Um, not that you need to, it just, it's a little bit easier to do like the, so you'll notice there's just one zip tie right here. It's a little bit easier to get in there. Let's turn this way here. <clears throat> A little bit easier to get in there um, without this servo there. And then that just routes all the way back. And let's talk about the back area here for a moment. So the entire time I did all my wiring, I went ahead, if you guys remember, I didn't lock tight in the, uh, the fly barless system mount yet, right? It was off the helicopter. So I mounted on my unit, but I didn't install it yet so I could route all the cables. So all my cabling is basically right underneath the plate. Um, each line dedicated to itself and zip tied up, you know, in a certain fashion to where, you know, the cables instead of being this long were maybe about this long. Um, but yeah, so the, the ESC comes out, actually you can see right from the top here, comes right behind um, this servo here, goes right underneath that tray. And it's really nice too because, let's see if I can turn it this way. <clears throat> If you look at this back servo, you can see that that runs right underneath it. Um, obviously, our servo arm is going to be all the way up here on top, so there's no way for it to interact with that um, the ESC cabling at all, which I think turned out really, really good. Okay. So, anyways, that all runs right into the back, and of course, I'm using the AR7200, so you can see that my throttle and double redundancy cable they just spiral right out, plug right in, easily 
um, accessible and maintainable if I ever need to. So I really, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, as far as servos go, let's bring this back. This was kind of cool, guys. This is probably my favorite part of the helicopter so far. So I've got the elevator and you know either you know pitch and or aileron servo depending on what you choose. And what I was able to do is I got some heat shrink. Now with heat shrink, um, I like to find a, the right diameter to where it won't fit over the plug on the servo so that it hugs the wires really well. So you do have to undo the three pins and, and take off the, the little plastic connector housing. And then anyways, so what I did was two um, shorter pieces for, well, this one was pretty short, this one was a little bit longer. And then I heat them and while they're hot, you can actually bend and, and hold the wires in place. Wait for them to cool and they'll hold their shape. So you can really manipulate the heat shrink really well. But you can see here, I was able to achieve a little arc over this one. This one comes straight down. And then what I did is I took a bigger piece and I was able to slide it over and connect them. So you've got like a little, little joint there. I think that looks freaking cool, if you ask me. It's the first time I've really done it before. Um, and I think this could be applied on a lot of different servo or a lot of different helicopters these days because a lot of them have very close servo mounting now. So I think it looks pretty badass. I mean, it really cleaned it up well. And then all I did was bring it down. There's a cutout in the frame right there. Did a little loop de doop song and dance. And then again, brought it right underneath, tucked everything in. Left each wire individual, that way, if I ever need to maintenance anything, I can. And let's see if I can get a shot of how those come out. Let's see. I don't know how good the lighting will be, but... Yeah, so you can see they come, they bend right around. And then I did one zip tie right there to keep them together. And then after that, they split off separate. And um, got them tucked right underneath the back plate here. And same thing for this one. This one's a little bit more exposed I guess if you will because it doesn't have another partner servo to pair up with but um, just manipulated the heat shrink I kept it round like that to give it a little bit of slack so that it wasn't tight no tension that also made it to where I didn't have to coil as much wire back here um, but also it gives me that nice good free access window to get to my servo arm on the elevator um, if you really feel necessary again you can put some rubber or something on the frames here just to avoid the wires from cutting. But again, this is stiff enough that, that I'm not too worried about vibrations. And it's an electric machine, so I'm, I'm just not really concerned about it at this point. Um, other than that, guys, fly barless uh, afterwards, I got everything plugged in. Now, since I am using a Spectrum-based system, I do have a Spectrum satellite installed right here. Um, just did a piece of double-sided sticky tape, and then I just I color on the outer, outer border outer border of it, if you will, uh, with just a black marker so that it's not white. Kind of cleans it up. Threw me a little zip tie on there. And then the cabling for that, again, it just goes right underneath here. And what I did is I didn't have one of the shorter um, Spectrum cables. I had the really long one. So I, I, I put it in like a little, little coil and I actually fastened it and tucked it up right underneath the bottom plate. That way it didn't interfere with any of my other wires. And then just brought the lead right out. So that's basically the finished wiring for the Spectre 5.5, at least with my particular setup. And uh, I think it turned out pretty damn clean, you guys. I think it looks great. Um, I know if I ever have a crash and I need to fix some stuff, swap out some parts or some components, it's, it's not going to be a headache or a hassle. There's not a lot of loops to jump over. Um, re even redoing this, you know, if I strip both of these servos and I had to replace the gears or throw in new servos, it's not going to be that hard. Um, I, I, all I have to do is just basically cut the heat shrink off or even just unplug both servos from back here, take them off, they'll pull straight out. Uh, tons of options. Um, oh, the tail servo. Let's look at the tail servo too because I kind of did the same. So as we went over, I didn't have my tail servo installed in some of the previous segments because I was waiting on some, some mounting brackets for it. So um, let's look at it real quick. So like I said, it's still a mid-size servo, but it mounts as a full size, as you can see. So I didn't really go with what the manual said, because you'll notice my bolts are coming from the outside, whereas in the manual it has them coming from the inside. But um, what I did is, let's see if we can get in here, is same thing. I took off the end of the servo, uh, the little plastic end on the servo lead, 
did my heat shrink and what that one does is it wraps right around you can see that I've got the two zip ties right there and while we're back here kind of under the hood you can see so the way I fastened in the servo is I got some of the Goblin I think they're the 500 uh, Goblin 500 full-size mounting servo set that they sell uh, but they have these little metal backers for the servos and they worked beautifully and they come in like a set there's well there's enough for three servos I think so um, it really helped me with mounting in that servo. I do know that they're working on a solution for this to where I think the future kits will come with uh, mid-size and full-size mounting options. But I really love the way that thing turned out. It looked great. Um, and actually, let's look at the zip ties from this side too. So you can see I just threw down two zip ties right there. And it does have the heat shrink running all the way up to the top. And then, I know it's, you're not going to be able to really see it because the fly barless system's on there, but... Um, this plate here has little cutouts on the side so that the rudder servo again just came up did a little loop-de-doop there plugged it right in and you can obviously see that once we install the tail tail boom those brackets are gonna hold it. there's plenty of room on the sides for you to route or conceal extra wires sorry guys I got hiccups here um, without it interfer uh, interfering with you installing the tail boom so very, very nice, very clean, very tidy. I enjoy the layout. Um, you can tell they actually thought about it. Um, I can't imagine all these spots for mounting and, and wiring were completely by accident. So I think they thought about the design of this very, very well. Um, it cleans up nice. It's going to be very easy to maintenance. Um, last thing I'll throw at you is just the battery. Now, I haven't tested this for CG yet, of course, because I still got to get the tail and everything on, which we're going to complete this helicopter in the next video. Uh, but I did just kind of go ahead and strap it in. They do provide two different straps. Um, this is just a 6 cell 5,000 milliamp pack. Um, and I did do a test fit with the canopy. And this is what I actually love the most is when your canopy goes on and off without you having to struggle or be too delicate. Um, a lot of helicopters, they don't leave a lot of room up here in the nose. So you got to force that damn canopy on it. Just, it's kind of a pain. Um, the Tron canopy goes on and off like butter. Um, no issues, no complaints. And you can see that I've got um, quite a little bit of cabling slack up here. But the nose is still maybe about right to there. So it fits it perfectly. Um, ideally, I could have soldered up these battery packs a little bit shorter on the EC5s. But that's just what I ended up with and I don't have any issues. So there's no reason to fix what's not broken. So... Overall, guys, that's the wiring layout that I went with for the Tron 5.5. Feel free to leave down in the comments if you have any questions um, as far as how you want to do your cabling uh, or if you need any additional tips or help from myself. Just feel free to throw down a comment, guys. I try to check them daily. Um, but overall, she's looking pretty damn sexy. So that's going to be the end of this portion of the build. On the next series, we're going to complete it by doing the tail boom, the main gear install. We'll do the belt tension. And then after that, we're ready for programming and test flying. So as always, my friends, thank you so much for watching. And remember, Freddy can fly, so can you.